Omicron is spreading around the world, but China's not worried. They're using the virus to push for new lockdowns. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Omicron. Less than a week ago, none of us had ever heard of it. But now, this new COVID-19 variant has spread around the world like, uh, well, a virus. If you want to learn more about Omicron and how it's going to affect us all, check out the episode we just published on our other channel, America Uncovered. But as the rest of the world goes through the Omicron variant panic, there's one country that's not worried at all. And that's China. Even though cases of the Omicron variant have been found in Hong Kong. Nope, China has totally got this, according to their official state-run propaganda. And would Chinese propaganda ever lie? The Chinese Communist Party is feeling pretty vindicated right now. And not just because the World Health Organization didn't name the new variant after the Greek letter Xi, which is spelled like Chinese leader Xi Jinping's last name. The WHO said they didn't name it that because she is a common last name. Except it isn't as common of a last name as other names the WHO has used for variants, like Mu. Of course, the real reason the WHO skipped Xi and not Mu is the leader of China isn't named Mu Jinping. That's real soft power. But the Chinese regime is really feeling vindicated because of their zero COVID strategy. While other countries are scrambling to impose Omicron related travel bans, China has been isolated for a long time and they're proud of it. Most of us haven't been able to travel abroad since the pandemic began because most countries have had some type of travel restrictions, but China took it to another level. They've banned pretty much all foreign travelers since the pandemic spread globally back in March 2020. At one point, even Chinese citizens found it almost impossible to go back to China. And now, almost two years later, it's still really hard for Chinese people to leave China either. International flights are limited, quarantine upon re-entry is harsh and lengthy, and Chinese authorities have ceased issuing or renewing passports for all but essential travel. So China has cut itself off from the rest of the world. But that's a good thing for the Communist Party, because the Chinese Communist Party loves control. And that love of control extends to how the party has been treating the coronavirus. It's one of the last countries in the world still trying to achieve zero COVID. And they're doing that with harsh lockdowns and forcing people into quarantine camps, which I've talked about in previous episodes. But the Chinese regime has been criticized for some of their extreme measures, like killing people's pets while they're in quarantine. And the Communist Party hates criticism almost as much as they love control. So back off and stop questioning them. The party has been especially touchy because they've realized zero COVID is impossible. If you believe official government numbers, which you should not, even the official figures admit the coronavirus has spread to 21 provinces in the latest wave. And some Chinese scientists have come out to say there's zero chance of actually reaching zero COVID. I guess someone didn't get the back off memo. But the party has solved these problems by now calling it a dynamic zero COVID policy. Dynamic zero COVID means not zero COVID, kind of zero COVID, almost zero COVID. But there's another reason the Chinese Communist Party is doubling down on their almost zero COVID policy. And it's not just because they never admit when they're wrong. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. As other countries started opening back up after widespread vaccine use, the Chinese Communist Party did the opposite they went back to another wave of lockdowns. The Chinese Communist Party has staked a lot of their legitimacy on being able to control the coronavirus. I mean, they figured out how to control people 
How much harder could it be to control a microscopic virus that constantly mutates? The rest of the world is trying to use vaccines to get back to normal. China can't do that because their vaccines aren't as effective. Even the head of China's CDC admitted that. So since the party must control the virus and their vaccines aren't that good, in addition to aggressive vaccination campaigns, officials have to rely on mass testing, lockdowns, and quarantine camps. Rinse and repeat. Some of the stories coming out of China's lockdowns are insane. Residents left starving inside makeshift quarantine centers fashioned out of shipping containers. Businesses forbidden from selling goods, even online. A baby reportedly tested for COVID 74 times. But most people in China are willing to deal with the lockdowns, and they have very little sympathy for those who complain. That's because they believe the Communist Party's propaganda that this is the only way to keep them safe. But as the lockdowns continue, there have been signs people just can't take it anymore. So the Chinese Communist Party is now using the new Omicron variant for a major propaganda push. They're trying to convince Chinese people and the rest of the world that the West was wrong and the Communist Party was right all along. First of all, let's not forget this new variant is the West's fault. Sure, the Omicron variant was first identified in South Africa, but that doesn't mean it came from there. Just like the original coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, but it definitely didn't come from there. But the Omicron variant is the West's fault because they didn't curb the spread of the virus and have therefore exposed developing countries. And Western countries have failed because they relied on vaccines. China didn't rely on vaccines because their vaccines suck, so there. Sure, you might criticize China for all their lockdowns, but now they'll be able to block the Omicron invasion. Why? Because China is an impregnable fortress. Just like the Great Wall. Now you might think, isn't it too soon to declare victory before anything has happened? And while China is still dealing with a wave of Delta infections? No. It's not too soon to declare victory. According to the Global Times, China's achievements in fighting the pandemic will eventually shine in human history. And they know that because no matter what happens, they can just rewrite history. But this propaganda campaign isn't just about rubbing the West's nose in it. It's also about reassuring the West that while China is still locked down, they're open for business. Chinese state-run media is talking about how China will maintain normal economic operations. The reality is China's economy has been hit hard by the repeated lockdowns. Factories have been shut down. Ports have been shut down. It's a huge problem. But the true ramifications of this haven't been felt yet because the rest of the world is also still recovering from our coronavirus lockdowns. But if the rest of the world reopens, and China is still locking down, that will put its economy in danger. Which is why the Communist Party would like the world to know China's economy is doing just great. So please, send them your money. Because they need it to keep the economy going. The question is, will the rest of the world believe this propaganda? More after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party has always used the coronavirus as propaganda. Remember back in February 2020, when the Communist Party boasted about buying the world time to fight the coronavirus. They even produced a video claiming they were saving the world because 99% of coronavirus cases were contained within China. Well, that didn't last. But even though China containing the virus within its borders was heroic, other countries trying to contain the virus within China's borders was downright evil. Remember when Israel shut down travel from China and a Chinese official literally compared it to the Holocaust? But travel bans are good now. So the Chinese regime's narrative on the coronavirus has been all over the place. But somehow other countries keep falling for China's propaganda. Like last year, when the director of the US CDC, Rochelle Walensky, called China's really strict lockdowns successful. Walensky used official Chinese statistics to claim that as a result of their really strict lockdowns, China's death rate 
was three per million, which shows a fundamental misunderstanding. China's death rate isn't three per million because of their lockdowns. It's three per million because they're lying. They're lying about the number of deaths. Look, this is a graph of total coronavirus deaths in China, according to official statistics. They claim to have only had four deaths since April 2020. How can you look at that graph and think, well, this looks legit. I trust these numbers. And now with the Omicron variant, the Chinese regime is saying their policy of strict lockdowns and quarantines was right all along. Will this convince other countries to lock down again too? Or is it possible that we've learned our lesson and we won't fall for China's propaganda? What's that, Shelley? Nope, we're just gonna keep giving them money. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon or the community subscription platform Locals. Bill asks, Chris, what do you think would happen if Xi made a state visit to Taiwan and addressed the Taiwan legislature? Then invited Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen to address the Chinese CCP government in the Great Hall. With both visits broadcast live and uncensored in China and Taiwan, could it help resolve some of the problems and provide a peaceful path to reunification? Well, Bill, that's an interesting question. But the only way this would happen is if the guy from Quantum Leap took over Xi Jinping's body and made him do this. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't even recognize Taiwan as a country. So she would never make a state visit to Taiwan because that would be acknowledging Taiwan has a president and a separate government that's not controlled by the Communist Party. In the Chinese Communist Party's alternate reality, Taiwan isn't just going to be unified with China someday, it currently is a province of China. That's why Chinese state-run media literally call Taiwan's presidential election the regional leadership election. Also, Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen should never go to mainland China because she would get disappeared. And then what would happen to her cats? At this point, Bill, I don't think there is a peaceful path to what the Communist Party calls reunification. And that's because the people of Taiwan do not want to be ruled by the Chinese Communist Party. That's especially true after what the Communist Party did to Hong Kong. And the party knows this, which is why they've started to drop the word peaceful when talking about Taiwan. Thanks for your question, Bill. And thank you for supporting China Uncensored. And if you'd like to be like Bill, join us on Patreon or Locals, and I'll answer your questions on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.